Welcome to Night Journey Rewind through the podcast. My name is James Graves. Look, I got to tell you something. About, I don't know, about three or four months ago, who were you performing with, Skylar? When with I saw Spencer, you? Spencer with Hofer. Spencer, yeah, with Spencer Hofer. There was this young lady who you see in the next, <laughs> right next to me, 17 years old, a phenom as far as as a trumpet player. I mean, seriously and when you did that boy hargrove tune i said okay yeah. the, I, I, I was hooked that was just magnificent but anyway she is a big talk around not just in the bay area but her name's getting out all around the place i want you guys to sit back and listen to her story and we have the opportunity and the pleasure of her going to be performing at the peacock lounge this coming month towards the end of the month which we'll talk about a little later ladies and let me say this. There was a a trumpet player. Her name was Flora Bryant back in the 50s and the 40s. Are you familiar? Have, did you ever hear of her? I don't think so. Okay, because she was like around, she was playing like with Diz, uh, Miles, all during that time. But during that time, a lot of women couldn't just play instruments. They had to sing and play. But when I was interviewing her, she said, don't call me a trumpeter. And I said, okay, what should I call you? She said, call me a trumpetiste. And so every female trumpet player, I call them a trumpetiste. So trumpetiste Skylar Tang, welcome to the show. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> okay, we gotta go down memory lane. How did it start for you musically? Uh, for, me, for me, um. My dad started teaching me piano at a really young age. He's not really a pianist himself, but um, he grew up playing classical piano, so um, that's where it started. But he also was a big fan of jazz. Um, his favorite artists were Bill Evans and Joshua Redman. Um, mm. And so I grew up listening to that in the car. Um, and, you know, because he was a fan of jazz music, he tried to teach me a little bit, you know, chords, mm -hmm. basic theory. So. That's kind of where it started, and I began playing the trumpet in fourth, fourth grade, maybe third, third grade. Um, so it's been like almost nine years now playing the trumpet, and I started playing jazz for real, for real, like in <laughs> middle school. Um, yeah, but it's been great. Like my, I've always felt more connected to like the creative um, side of music. You know, back when I played classical piano, I, it didn't speak to me as much because I felt like the process was a bit um, iterative, right? Mm -hmm. it was, um, it, I wasn't really utilizing my creativity as much as um, jazz allowed me to do. So when I discovered jazz music and I, um, I got into the work of, you know, Roy Hargrove, one of my favorite trumpet players, um, Clifford Brown, you know, the greats, um, I just found like that their music, that their art kind of spoke to me and decided to continue playing. What got you interested in the trumpet? Well, I wanted to branch out. Um, and I think trumpet was an instrument because, you know, um, you know, I was still in like that classical um, world. And, um, you know, I was debating between like, I actually don't know. Let me think about this. <laughs> okay. I think it was because I didn't want to play violin. I think I, I gave myself two options of, you know, violin and trumpet because they're kind of like, um, you know, the main instrument, like the string family. And then you have the brass. Um, and I think I just chose a trumpet because I didn't want to play violin. <laughs> I tried it out. Um, and I remember like, the first time um, I tried out playing the trumpet, I was able to figure out some of the fingerings. It was it sounded horrible, but like I was like I, I could make this work. Like, um, and I, the more I played, um, and especially after starting to play jazz, the more and, and finding like jazz musicians who had sounds that I wanted to um, emulate and I wanted to um, sound like. So. That, that, I guess, solidified my love for the trumpet. Um, there are so many great musicians that I can't even, you know, if somebody asked me, who's your five best trumpet players? I honestly don't know if I could give that to them because there's so many. And then some of them, their whole 
attitude and their take on playing the trumpet, which might be different from Freddie, from Blue Mitchell to Whit Marcellus to Lee Morgan to Miles Davis, you know, the list goes on. So, but there's just something magical about the trumpet. So I can kind of understand why you kind of gravitated toward the trumpet. Now, when did you really feel and was really serious about playing this music? Hmm, probably getting, you know, I COVID started what started when I was in eighth grade, um, like the spring of that year. And I think for me, it was um, uh, n not being able to play with people anymore. And I felt like I'd been taking that for granted. So in eighth grade, I got in, I, I became a part of the SF Jazz High School All-Star Group and um, playing with musicians that I really admired, um, high school musicians, being young and looking up to um, these musicians that I thought were so amazing and I, I admired them so much and I still do. Um, they were like my role models and that pushed me. But when um, COVID started, like right, <laughs> like six months after I began playing with them, oh, like it sucked. Right? I mean, <laughs> got through it, but you know, I just, I kind of felt that drive to continue playing and practicing. Um, even though I wasn't able to play with people, I, I began listening more, you know, um, practicing at home, cr being a bit more creative, right? I branched down to some production, some, you know, other mm -hmm. ways to create music, composing, that's where it began. Um, so I think just being passionate about it, but like, realizing I can't take it for granted um that was something that uh really pushed me to work work harder and you know to devote myself to this music you won some awards didn't you do a uh write in a, an arrangement and won an award for it talk briefly about that yeah um I won the essentially Ellington composition contest oh okay last year mm -hmm. I think 2022 yeah um it was a part of essentially Ellington like high school festival except they have you know composition and contests and um I think Ted Nash judges it and um I was so lucky and so grateful to have been selected for my composition it's called Kaleidoscope um and it was one of the first large ensemble compositions I like fully wrote fleshed out like um, one of the first pieces that I really, really felt like I was proud of um, because I worked hard on it and I was so grateful for the opportunity to go to New York and have this piece performed by the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. And it was like, like phenomenal oh. <laughs> experience. It was wild. Like having um, something that you created. It's like, you know, when you write, a piece or for me at least it's on your computer or you know the paper and it's like a blueprint it's like the instruction manual mm -hmm. right but when your vision actually becomes realized in the form of you know performance right that instruction manual becomes like something a lot bigger something greater something that actually um does what it's supposed to do you know actually has that emotional quality you know that's actually real right mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. is just um one of the like most yeah. amazing experiences as a composer as a writer um so yeah i was really fortunate enough to have that um experience with like the greatest uh jazz big band in the country it was quite amazing wow my name is james graves this is night journey rewind the podcast and we're visiting with trumpetiste Skylar Tang. Now, you know, I want to get back just a little bit to you writing and, you know, your writing. Did that come easy for you? I mean, what is, what is the creative flows that be able to make you put some music together? Well, I think it's tough writing. You know, I've always had writer's block as, you know, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. When I get writing assignments, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to put things down on paper. But musically, like, um, I am fortunate enough to have a variety of different experiences. I started on piano 
so I have a decent understanding of harmony and orchestration already. Um, I used to play around on like m- music editing software like GarageBand, um, mm-hmm. where I learned kind of the function of different the other instruments. Even though I didn't play um, other instruments, right? I kind of understood what what they did, and I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of big band playing experience through uh, programs like you know the Stanford Jazz Workshops, um, middle school big bands, and SF Jazz High School All Stars. So I think. Um, writing is kind of where a lot of my influences kind of click together. A lot of my skills, um, they work really hand in hand when it comes to writing, mm-hmm. although it is really tough for me. So um, it was it was difficult. And but once I kind of got the hang of it, once I listened more to big band repertoire, saw it, like heard what worked and what didn't and, you know, just work work through it practiced right it it, it got easier <laughs> yeah cool. very cool um you know as you and i know you're still developing but my god you're a monster already um what were some of the key factors that said okay i love this music is improvisational i want to continue to do it and i want to make it a career well, hmm, let me think about that. <laughs> or did you even think about having a career and it was just something that you enjoy doing? Yeah, well, I, I think music is so special for a variety of different reasons. I mean, it's cliche, but music truly does unite people and um, bring people together. And there's, I've experienced like no feeling as vibrant as, you know, playing music for people and they're singing and dancing and having a great time and that ability to um bring someone joy and hope um through music is i think something very special and something that i you know don't want to take for granted and something that i feel like i have to give to Mm -hmm. the world um Mm -hmm. and you know it's playing music is you know rewarding for me but what makes me want to uh, pursue as a career is seeing how rewarding it can be for other people and um you know i i, I think that's why uh, that's that's why musicians we play music right it's for the art and for just building up our communities um right yeah and it, yeah it's just a very powerful and special um, tool. well you know I, well you know what i agree with you because even though i don't play music but i i was a jazz jock for so many years and it just really instead of just putting on one song then put on another song i really put a lot of thought into what's the next song to complement the last song yes and then i've worked that through years and i love calvin keys when calvin sees i say hey calvin how you doing still looking for that perfect note <laughs> and and i feel the same way james still looking for that perfect mix you know Oh, yeah. And uh, um, so I, I totally agree with you on that. As you were pursuing your career, when was the opportunity where, I don't know if I want to say a big name person said, hey, I would like you to come on tour with me. Or I would like you to play with me. Um, but something along in that line, who was that? Or hmm. Let me think about that. Um. Well, I've been fortunate enough to have many opportunities. Um, and I think I've been on the essentially Ellington composition um, contest. That was a big one. Um, mm-hmm. But let me tell you about another. So there's this program, National High School Youth Program called NYO, National Youth Orchestra. It's run by Carnegie Hall and they have a jazz big band. And I was fortunate enough to be selected um, for the past two years as a trumpet player, as a member of that ensemble. And um, it's under the direction of Sean Jones. um, And there's other phenomenal faculty. And we've, um, they, they take us on tour. We've toured the U S and we've toured Europe and um, being able to play music at such a high level. I mean, we're all like young people, but we rehearse, we practice, we put like 120% into the music and, um, it really, that that really shows um, in all the shows we performed, in, you know, touring the U.S. and Europe, 
we've been very well received and um we've you know i think we've really got our message across um being a national group mm -hmm. and uh, especially being a national group that shares music outside the country i think we've um really we've really embodied what we want to convey to um, an international audience and i think um having that being so um committed and dedicated to the music in the ensemble has taught me a lot um, especially with the direction of sean jones um, mm -hmm. one of my you know heroes he's an amazing trumpet player um and being able to hear him play every night for like two weeks um on tour and you know play his music and um hear what he has to say he's th that was a phenomenal experience compare the audience overseas to the audience here in the united states hmm. I, mean, <laughs> I think i mean it's pretty similar honestly like there's more that's um that we share than we have you know that we uh have different um regarding you know because the music we're playing is um we're evoking you know the same stories and um and i think in that sense like the stories and the emotions that we put into our music they're like universal human feelings and, right um, right right and we're appreciated in both the year in both europe and the u.s um and yeah although like europe has a completely different tradition regarding music um you know we played in more concert hall type venues rather than you know performing art centers but even so like they're they're not closed-minded at all right you you you'd think maybe if they had this like long tradition of classical music they'd be less open no there's always that sense of you know appreciation they come out in the middle of the week to listen to a group of young kids play like there's so much um joy and there's so much uh appreciation um in you know mm -hmm. listening and and I really am grateful to have had that experience. And I'm really glad for, um, you know, to be playing, to have played for an audience like that. You know, the reason why I ask you that is because a lot of musicians that I've interviewed in the past, they love the States, they love playing the States, but the reception and the overall enthusiasm when they're overseas is just incredible. Because like you said, they do have a different mindset than here in the States in a lot of areas. And they just seem to be, in my eyes, from what I've heard, I haven't experienced it, but from what I've heard, just seems like over in Europe and overseas, they just seem to maybe be a little bit more not so judgmental and a little bit more open-minded to music. Yeah, no, Europe, Europe was <laughs> phenomenal. Like, um, yeah, it, it was, it was truly a, just a life-changing experience <laughs> um when are we gonna hear something on wax or cd however they want to use the phrase oh man um hopefully in the next few years i mean i still don't really know what that would sound like um I've, you know been writing i've music uh but you know, I'm hoping to move to New York next year for college. And, you know, being in that scene, I hope I'll be able to find more, a more distinctive voice. Um, because right now, I play mostly as a sideman and I love it, right? I, I love the Bay. It's got a, a pretty great scene, but I just want to spend more time, you know, figuring out what it is I want to do. Um, and, you know, and, and there's so much I love doing. I just, you know, the reason why mm -hmm. I love playing trumpet is because I love music. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I love playing jazz is because that's, like, the music that speaks the most to me. And, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that the genre, the, the music that I love is so broad. And I don't know what um, I yet really want to do within that. So, um, for now, 
um just you know keeping things at the back of my head but hope <laughs> the upcoming years uh have right. more definitive picture you know well i will say this going to new york is still the mecca oh yeah and um there's a lot of clubs that are opening back up in new york now so it's starting to get back to how it was before COVID and a little before that time. Um, great experience for you. Whatever it is that you want to do and achieve musically, I'm quite sure you will definitely find it in New York. But then in defense of the Bay Area, I didn't realize until I started, started doing shows there, there's so many fantastic, musicians in san francisco it's just unbelievable yes there there are and i'm so glad to have you know grown up here i i live in the peninsula um it's, you know it's quite a drive to the city and the east bay but it's been so worthwhile um mm -hmm. and i'm i'm really grateful to you know have the opportunities i have because i live here right my name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind, the podcast, and we're visiting with trumpetist Scott Tang. All right, let's talk about this show that's coming up in December that you'll be performing at the Peacock Lounge. What can we expect? Who is your musicians you know, for your quartet? So we got um, Dylan, Dylan Vado on vibes um bring a vibes player yeah i I met him when really playing with the marcus shelby orchestra mm -hmm. and oh man like i really admire his playing and yeah it's gonna be awesome um i'm gonna have bo cadigan on drums uh swinging uh he's from he, he went to nyu um but he's been he's graduated since then but um yeah he's back in the bay he's been gigging around it's um yeah, awesome drummer, and uh, and I I, I was I'm lucky enough to have Jayla Chi on bass. She's from the Bay, she, recent graduate of Juilliard. Um, so she's based in New York now, playing all over the place. Um, but she's gonna be back in town on the night December twenty eighth, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be a real treat to be playing with these wonderful musicians I admire so much. Hmm. That sounds really good. Um, any originals that you're gonna play, or yeah, I'm thinking a of combination of both. Probably a combination of both. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> That's still in the works, huh? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we got some great stuff planned out. Well, we're looking forward to it. With Skyler Tang performing at the Peacock Lounge, which is five five two Hate Street in San Francisco on the 28th. Skyler, I want to thank you for your time. Looking forward to seeing you and listen to you perform again, especially as you as the leader of the group. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's super exciting. And um, thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you so much. We'll be talking real soon. Ladies and gentlemen, trumpetist Skyler Tang will be at the Peacock Lounge December 28th. Two shows, 8, 9, 30. You don't want to miss this one.